hockey fans, are you ready to brave the wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awaj, and Brave the Wild is available on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Thank you once again for joining me today. Another week for the Minnesota Wild, another year, and another New Year's Eve loss, and a 1-2 and two record. Could be worse, could be better. I don't know, is that just kind of how it is at the Wild right now? It could be worse, it could be better. Do we want to get worse and get a higher draft pick? Is a trade coming? I've been hinting at it for a while, but is it ever going to come? I don't know. I don't know if a trade's ever going to come because we've been waiting forever. Uh, Chicago, the same old story. I mean, I guess you could flip-flop Chicago and Winnipeg for some reason. We thought maybe the Wild would get beat 5-2 to two to uh, the Winnipeg Jets and we beat the Blackhawks 3-1, to one, but no, we never beat the Blackhawks 3-1. to one. I've just... the. The Wild basically never keep the Blackhawks down that far, unless it's just a horrible game for Chicago. You thought the Chicago Blackhawks were in first place, and the Jets were kind of like where they used to be years ago. So, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's like the same old thing. Chicago just owns the Wild. It doesn't even matter if Corey Crawford's in that. This other guy that we'll talk about shortly ended up being a hell of a goalie as well. Please bear with me. I'm still not feeling my best. I was kind of not feeling good last week. I'm feeling better generally, but now my voice is messed up a bit because that's how colds tend to go. They start in your throat, they go to your nose, and then they end up in your throat again with the uh, the cough instead of the, uh, well, they end up in your esophagus more than your throat, so to speak. So yeah, it is what it is. A 5-2 to two loss to Chicago on the 27th of December. Merry Christmas to all of you. Hope you had that Merry Christmas. Hope you all had a Happy New Year. Uh, the Wild almost never win on New Year's Eve, and they did last year. Surprisingly, that was cool. You finally saw them win on New Year's Eve, and they lose again this year to Pittsburgh. A two to one or three to two loss. Part of me felt like two to one to be five to two loss to Chicago in Chicago, and you got to hear the same old thing. Patrick Kane shoots, he scores. Does that sound like a broken record? Because it is. It is a broken record. It was a hat trick for Patrick. Yeah, St. Patty's Day. It was St. Patrick Kane's Day in Chicago on the 27th. The hat trick and all that good stuff. His 20th goal of the year. Evil Otto scored two goals. That's Brandon Saad, the guy with that evil smirk on his face. Evil Otto. Alex Debrincat. Uh, nice uh, <laughs> setup to Brandon Saad for the one-timer. Patrick Kane's shots were all wristers. You didn't see the typical Patrick Kane on the breakaway and making a move on Dubnik or whoever in the past. Well, it was actually pretty much always Dubnik and Patrick Kane's time here, I suppose. During the, the great years of Patrick Kane as the goalie. But I suppose you, go, you can go back to um, Mr. Backstrom years ago, too. Parisi, not surprisingly, scored as well, close to the net and all that. That was great. But it was just another depressing day for Minnesota. Uh, Eric Stahl scored basically by getting smushed into the, getting smushed into the ice. Guys like laying on his back basically it ended up getting his thirteenth goal. He's been in a huge drought for quite a while. Certainly not even close to the same guy last year. But I also would not be surprised if he's traded before the deadline for well to a, to another team, hopefully for a draft pick or something, something you know, a, a young prospect, whatever, something it is. To a competitive team that would like to have some veteran, uh, a stable veteran center, it would be a huge loss. Don't don't get me wrong, but at the same time, as he certainly ain't the Eric Stahl he was last year. Yet uh, still good, obviously still good, but not enough pace to score forty two goals like last year. You just could see the forty goals coming the way he was rolling and rolling and rolling. Uh, Patrick Kane is on pace for forty goals now. His twentieth goal of the season was the hat trick for Patrick. That was an empty netter, but. The whole game just felt like the same old story. Minnesota put puck after puck on net and could not get the job done. Dubnik got pulled again, just like he did a couple times in the past. Uh, Delia. Colin Colin Delia. I I don't know who Colin Delia is, but, well, I'm sorry. Uh, Obviously, teams have prospects in the system and all that. Sometimes it's just just an AHL goalie doing his thing, but whatever it is, he, uh, well, got the job done. Off to a good start. Undrafted free agent for, born in 1994 from California. California A. Colin Dullia has played in has won three games so far for the Blackhawks. He got in a couple games last year. So mostly just a- AHL, you know, free agent signing, blah, blah, blah. So far this uh, in, during the course of his career. But he's done a heck of a job. And Corey Crawford's out again. And he's 3-0 and for Chicago. Goals against average 1.66. So far, including the victory over the Minnesota Wild. So, well, there there it is. I mean, I guess there it is. 
David Riddick was also a uh, undrafted free agent for Calgary, so he developed in the AHL and in the system and all that, and it is what it is. <sighs> and I don't know, the Blackhawks not even near 500. They're way below everybody, and they're going to be in the top five in the NHL draft, and which scares me quite a bit. you got a nice young prospect who's ready to play right away, possibly. That's in that range. Usually in the top five or so, you're, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get a guy who's ready to play right away. Um, 18 years old or whatever, obviously, that's usually how young they are at the beginning. And usually they're that good and that ready to go in the top five. Anything beyond that, it's very unlikely. You're usually going to wait a year at least, if not two or three, for the player to develop in, well, juniors, AHL, and ultimately NHL, or per se, overseas, develop overseas for a while, and pray to God you can get them out of a contract if it's one of those situations, the real copies of. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, that does scare me, though, because Kane and Tave still, they still got it. It's just the fact that everybody around them is either old or, or too young, too old or too young, and um, or beat up and battered and all that stuff. Brandon Saad has underachieved most of his career, I thought. His, his early days in Chicago, very, very bright prospect, but he's dropped off a bit. He did have a couple goals in the game. Uh, Dubnik was awful, I thought. Again, the Wild put up the effort, put the puck on net, but again, defensively, they were terrible. Um, in the Blackhawks zone, the Wild did good, but defensively, it just I just thought the Wild were sloppy. Dubnik was not himself. You could just tell. It's just like he, he kind of had the whole feeling, I think, like same old crap, whatever especially on the uh, second goal from Patrick Kane. It just did not look good. It just went right past him, and he just kind of was like, yeah, yeah, and then in came, uh, <laughs> basically about the way you describe it, in came Alex Stalock. You finally got to see Stalock play, and he wasn't that great either. What a dorky, stupid play, actually. That ultimately set up Brandon Saad's second goal. Came way out of the net. See, it's one thing to play the puck. It's one thing to play the puck. I mean, the Wild were still in the game, 3-1, to one, all that. You're playing the puck, and then you just, like, what are you doing? He went way too far to the net and gave the puck right to Debrin Cat, Debrin Cat, who I called something called Debrin Cat. But no, he's he's a name. He's been a prospect. He was a prospect and all that. People know who he is. I'm just messing around. But um, gave it right to Debrin Cat and set up uh, Brandon Saad, and that was all she wrote there on the power play. Uh, Alex Delock is great playing the puck, but once in a while, I mean, I don't know, gambling a little too much there. It was basically an empty net play for uh, Brandon Saad's 11th goal this season. And that was pretty much all she wrote. Again, Eric Stahl getting close to the net and scoring with less than a minute left, putting the Wild within two. And then Patrick Kane had the uh, had the hat trick. Hat trick for Patrick. Empty net shot. And the Wild could have used some of these empty net, uh, the accuracy on some of these empty net shots, like Eric Stahl and such. Not, not Eric Stahl, but like uh, Zucker and others who've had opportunities in the past in games where the Wild were ahead couldn't even keep it on net, and it was a freaking icing, but Patrick Kane, the thing is like right in the center, like a, 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 you could put a tiny little pin in the middle of the net, and, and Patrick Kane would hit it from like the, from center ice, that's how accurate his shot is, and well, that's why he's Patrick Kane, and that's all there is to say, so whatever, um, not a good game for Minnesota at all, and just devastating, uh, a lot of us at that point was like, bleep it, just just tank the season, hell with it, you know, let's get a higher draft pick. It's pretty much what everybody's saying nowadays. And then you have this nice win against Winnipeg on the 29th, and you feel, wow, I mean, you go into Winnipeg, you figure it's the typical, okay, you win in XL, but you generally are going to lose over in Bell MTS Place. Smaller building, only 15,000 seats or so, a little over that, a little under 16,000. And then midway through the first three, and Matt Barkowski puts the puck on net, and it was a pretty nice shot, and Matt Bartowski's first game in over a year, played with Calgary and all that. He's been a journeyman with Boston and other teams, and nice play. Uh, nice puck on net and all that, put the puck on and scores. Um, I remember when I was like, why are the Wilds calling up a left shot defenseman? Dumba's right, and that's what we need, a right shot guy. And you, you figured Bill Pedio or <laughs> Ryan Murphy. And yeah, we'll talk about Ryan Murphy in a minute. <laughs> the Wild did make their decision on which one of those two. Yeah, you can tell I'm thrilled about that, but oh well. It is what it is. Uh, Matt Bartowski, but that's because now uh, Nick Steeler, of all people, he's banged up a little bit, so he missed his first game since uh, joining the Wild, basically, other than being scratched a couple of times to give uh, Gustav Olofsson a chance at times last year. It just kind of was what it was and uh, last year at times. Give Steeler a break and give someone else a chance to get some ice time, but um, 
Matt Bartkowski out there. Bartkowski. Bartkowski. Again, a journeyman, undrafted guy. Put the puck on net. A wrister shot. He took his time. He didn't just release it right away on the one-timer. That's what probably helped a bit. Kind of gave him a little hesitation and release on the shot. Not a bad shot at all. And his first goal in quite a while. Going back into March of 2017. So happy for him there. Nice performance. And uh, he did a good job. Unfortunately, he was sent down pretty quickly, though, after the Pittsburgh game. It just is what it is. Uh, Charlie Coyle then was found by Parisi. Ultimately, Luke Cunning finally getting his first point of the year. He got it like that. Charlie Coyle on the release. Parisi, very, uh, P Parisi played awesome in this game. I gotta say, uh, getting the puck on that and all that and setting up other players uh, with his hard work and good wall and work and all that good stuff. Uh, Parisi's just flat out been the best skater on the wild, I think, this season. Um... He, and certainly the most consistent. You haven't really seen a stretch where Parisi's just invisible. And you do get stretches where Granlin is. Like, Granlin's the best player, you could say. But he has the stretches. He has the streaks. This and that. Obviously, Eric Stahl is streaky, too, at times. That's pretty obvious. You don't need a writer. Yeah, let's not even go there. The guy can't even get the puck on net half the time. It's, he's just awful sometimes. And I don't know. Sometimes you get blocked. Sometimes you get poked and all that. Poke check, all that. But then, next thing you know... The guy can't even hit the broadside of a barn, and I, I I don't know what's going on with Nita Ryder, and it's been a problem for a while. I've not been a big fan of his the last year and a half, to be quite honest. He's not the same guy. Uh, Charlie Coyle, though, nice move on the pass from Barizzi. That was great. Putting the Wild up 2 nothing on the road in Winnipeg. You figure, yep, yeah, the, the, the other shoe's going to drop. It's in Winnipeg. This is a dangerous place. This is one of the best teams in the NHL. A lot of people believe they're going to win the Cup or at least get to the final, this and that, because it seems like the East has been winning the Cup every year lately, like a Toronto or Tampa this year, possibly. Or maybe Washington or Pittsburgh emerges, because Penguins have won six in a row now. So, hmm, at least as of uh, New Year's Eve. Patrick Laine getting his uh, 24th goal of the year on the power play. Early in that third period made you get that little, <laughs> get, get a little tight in your, in your throat there on that play. Oh, boy. But Blake Wheeler's 44th assist. That's unbelievable. On the power play again, Dustin Bufflin continuing to wrap up, rack up his power play points. Patrick Laine, that nice, uh, obviously, <laughs> still up and coming and great player for the Winnipeg Jets. Just, just one of the great pieces on that roster. And he's able to put it in and it's like, oh boy, Winnipeg would have many chances, but Dubnik wasn't having it. Phenomenal throughout the game. Many opportunities for Winnipeg and Dubnik kept slamming the door, keeping the game 2-1. to one. Next thing you know, Winnipeg's at the empty net. Parisi outworks his opponents time and time again. Pushes the puck forward for Eric Fair. That was just an awesome play by Parisi. It's, you didn't think that we were anywhere near getting an empty net goal on this play. And Parisi just worked and worked and worked and just pushed that puck forward. Eric Fair was all by himself and able to bury that sucker for his fifth goal of the year. That's his second empty netter in a row, believe it or not. So Eric Fair picking up points on the empty net, I suppose. And, well, good for him. Good hustle. Yeah, good positioning and good timing, all that. And Eric Fair, obviously, very, very valuable piece for the Minnesota Wild as our fourth line center and able to get his fifth goal of the season. So we're very happy about that. This was an awesome game. Dubnik played well. The defense in front of Dubnik was good. Uh, neutral zone, you know, the Wild played solid throughout the entire game. Nobody's perfect. It wasn't a perfect game, but generally speaking, Minnesota outplayed Winnipeg throughout the entire night, and it was a beautiful thing to watch. It, it truly was. Uh, only 24 shots in Connor Hellebuck, but the Wild able to capitalize when they needed to at the end of the day. Dubnik ended up facing 27 shots and stopped 26 of them. Very, very lights out. And again, the chances by Winnipeg, some were good, but generally speaking, we didn't leave Dubnik out to dry and that was a huge key. Good neutral zone and uh, in the zone and all that. Good solid play. You didn't get any. Uh, you didn't get any crazy odd man rushes throughout the game. Like time and time again. Like Chicago, he was just an awful overall night. Uh, players out of position, sloppy, and you'll see a lot more of that going into the Pittsburgh game. Not a high scoring game, but not a well played game by Minnesota either. I'd have to say, even though Minnesota did have their chances to score goals, and they just didn't. Um, Minnesota ending up with uh, well, we ended up the drought. We ended the drought generally speaking. We finally got three goals in a game, but only two against the goalie and Winnipeg. And then two goals against Chicago, two against Pittsburgh. So at least we weren't stuck at one goal in these games. So we've doubled our goal output, generally speaking, but still pretty damn quiet. Only five goals in three games. That's still, generally speaking, not going to get it done. 
Pittsburgh is just like the other Blackhawks, quite frankly. They're the Blackhawks of the East, to be quite honest. Uh, Matt Cullen, the ancient one, 42 years old, able to get his second, uh, or I mean, able to pick up an assist in the game. Gotta love Matt Cullen. He's got eight points on the year, so that's better than nothing. Obviously, ancient fourth-line center now for Pittsburgh. Man, drafted in 1996. <laughs> 1996. That's back in the day, isn't it? 1976, the guy was born. Mm-mm-mm. 42 years old as of November 2nd. Eight points on the year. Fifth assist of the season. He was able to get another one, actually. Another assist in New York. So, actually, that was his fifth assist. Nice for Matt Collin, though. Good to see him doing well in Pittsburgh. They're actually moving up the charts, though, big time. As they've been stinking for a while. Watch out for the Pittsburgh Penguins. It ain't over yet. Their little run of Stanley Cups or Stanley Cup contention. It's not over yet. They're second place in that Metropolitan Division. They're knocking. They're knocking on the door, the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, unfortunate for other teams out there. <laughs> Man, that would like to knock them out and finally move on. We'll look at the standings a bit some more just for fun. Mr. Consistency, Parisi did wind up scoring late in the game. But uh, generally speaking, very nice night uh, for Miko Koivu, I thought. He's been playing better of late, better defense, and getting the puck on net, creating chances for others. And he was able to capitalize. Nino Niederreiter and Coyle playing with Koivu in the power play. Interesting power play unit there. A couple guys with Koivu that hardly ever score, and Koivu hardly ever scores, but it worked. Okay, wild up one nothing in Pittsburgh with a group of guys that hardly ever score, so on the second power play unit there. That's a strange second power play unit, but it worked. Made you feel good. But then there's the Patrick Kane or Jonathan Taves of the Pittsburgh Penguins. I guess he's the Jonathan Taves, generally speaking, is uh, Crosby. Even though he can score like Patrick Kane, too. Oh, Kessel had a huge game as well. Unbelievable pass to Sidney Crosby. This is when you knew we were in trouble. You just knew we were in trouble because Phil Kessel's pass <laughs> to Crosby went through the legs of not just Parisi, but Suter as well, and got to Sidney Crosby. It was like the most perfect pass you've ever seen. I don't know how you do it. it there's a little luck involved, but there's a lot of skill too. I mean, good Lord. I, I don't know how how you can even do that. I mean, time it just right. My goodness, perfect pass to Sidney Crosby. He's just like, okay, sweet. There you go. There's my 18th goal of the year. And then Crosby ended up setting up Phil Kessel for his 17th goal. That one wasn't pretty. Players just kind of went all over the place in the wild, just struggling. The Minnesota up one nothing in this game, remember. And then now you're down 2-1 to one with just 21 seconds remaining in the first period. And it's just like you just feel sick. Like you just knew because old <laughs> DeSmith, Casey DeSmith, was slamming the door in the wild again throughout the night. Over and over and over. Minnesota, good chances in the game. It's not like we played horribly, particularly in the in the Pittsburgh zone. We played well, but just couldn't freaking finish. Just, you know, some of the shots are just maybe, they're just not where you want them to be. Debron Cat's able to make the stop, this and that. Good chances, but it's like we're making every goalie look like Ken Dryden or God knows who, uh, Patrick Waugh, pa whoever, you know. We're making every goalie look like the best goalie ever. Our shots are good, but it's like they're not deceptive. They're not, there's just something missing from some of these plays, and that's why the Wild are unable to score, generally speaking, and it's been a problem forever for the last month or so, which is really frustrating. Occasionally you have this nice breakout game, and then back down you go to the one or two goals a game, and that's kind of how it was. Again, credit to Smith. He was great. Uh, there were some good scoring chances for Minnesota, and he stopped everything, basically, other than Parisi scoring late again, which was a very nice goal, and put the Wild in position to get something done, but again, could not finish. As I try not to cough to death here, but Parisi and all the others. Parisi ended up getting a 17th goal of the year. Crazy to think he's only one goal behind uh, Mr. It's pretty impressive. One goal behind... Uh, Mr. Crosby, but still, you know, that's good. Obviously, Crosby's going to have a lot more of assists than Parisi, though. That's the, that's that's a given. But, again, a good, solid, awesome year for Zach Parisi. Able to get the job done there. Multiple opportunities. It looked like Granlin was the one that scored at one point on this play, but Parisi ultimately finishing it and putting the Wild within one. But, again, Minnesota unable to capitalize on their chances down the stretch as the Wild would have their little flourish, their little, you know, their little surge trying to tie the game up. And Casey DeSmith is able to push everything to the side. And at the end of the day, the Wild are only one game above 500 and fifth place in the Central. And on the outside, looking in. 
And that's basically all there is to say on the outside, looking in. And I don't know. I mean, you can talk about trades. We can talk about this and that. But I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see on that, unfortunately, because nothing's happening. And the frustration is just growing, I think, for a lot of us, unfortunately. Oh, boy. It just is what it is. Uh, let's look at the wild card standings and all that. Tampa Bay is still ruling the league. They're ahead of everybody. They've won six in a row. Ten points ahead of second place Toronto. Washington is leading the Metropolitan Division, if you can believe it, but Pittsburgh is only one game behind, and they've won seven games in a row. Buffalo is starting to drop off a bit, but they still have a great record and all that. In fact, they're only three points behind them, so I'm not going to give up on them just yet. It's just, unfortunately, they have the New York Islanders only two points behind them. Ninth place, which we all know what ninth place means in the Eastern Conference. Interesting. I hope Buffalo makes it. I do. I'd love to see the Islanders make it too, but I'd like to see Pittsburgh or Columbus kind of bow out or something. That'd be kind of nice. We'll see what happens. Calgary is first place in the Western Conference. I can't believe it. But here's the story right now that is uh, emerging and continuing to emerge. Every week I talk about it, how Vegas keeps catching up and this and that, and they keep getting better. The Vegas Golden Knights are now two points behind the Calgary Flames for first place in the Western Conference, not just the Pacific Division, but the Western Conference. Uh, over on the Fireside chat, they constantly talk about how they're in a sucky division. It's not that sucky. Now, outside of uh, Vegas and San Jose, sure, it gets a little suckier, but Anaheim's not that bad. Uh, but look at Las Vegas. I think Las Vegas could beat the Calgary Flames in this playoff series. And I like Calgary, obviously, but I don't like them that much anymore because of what's been going on. <laughs> the scary part is Winnipeg's got multiple games in hand. Vegas does Vegas does have the most games played, so they do have that against them. Minnesota's got quite a few games in hand, but that's always our excuse, I guess. Six games behind the Winnipeg Jets. Three games in hand, or I just call them Winnipeg Jets, the Anaheim Ducks. Six points behind the Anaheim Ducks with three games in hand. So just win three in a row and everything will be okay. Anaheim will just lose three in a row. So we'll, we'll just be tied with them right away. And everyone else will lose too. We all know that's how it works. So that, yeah, we'll be fine. Interestingly though, Anaheim and Colorado have lost six games in a row, which is actually quite staggering when you think about that. Those are the two wild card clubs, of course. They want us to catch them. They want Edmonton or Vancouver, who's still hanging around to catch them. Man, I, I, Calgary or Colorado and Anaheim have lost six games in a row. That's insane. See, that, that's a lot. That's the worst uh, losing streak in the NHL, tied with Ottawa, who's the worst team in the league, when, and uh, Detroit. Of course, Chuck Fletcher gets to start over with Philadelphia there. Four losses in a row. They're, they've been terrible. Tied with Ottawa for 35 points. Blackhawks have 36. St. Louis actually has the worst at the moment with 34 but remember how hockey's adopted the old uh, lottery, just like the NBA. So just because you're the worst team doesn't guarantee you're going to get the top pick in the draft. But um, I don't think it's as like crazy as the NBA draft, where it's like 25% chance you're going to get it if you're the worst team in the league, which is really annoying, actually. Kind of defeats the purpose of everything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote. The Mike Madonna slash Neil Broughton Award for this episode... Zach Parisi. I thought he was consistent in every game. I thought he worked his ass off in every single game. The only frustrating part is how that puck got through his legs, but whatever. You know, we can forgive that. <laughs> I, I would hope. Zach Parisi is the uh, Mike Badano slash Neil Broughton Award winner for this uh, episode. I think he's the I think he's the leader for the year right now. He's certainly been a wonderful, wonderful renaissance for Minnesota, and I was praying for that. It's just a crying shame. We're six points out of the playoffs right now, and we, you know how you got to win multiple games in a row, and other teams have to keep losing, and everyone else has to keep losing, which is, again, it just doesn't work that way. So you've just got to keep winning. you got to have a winning stretch that lasts for a long time. One thing that's crazy is, uh, again, it just shows Devin Dubnik's value is very high. As much as we get frustrated with him and all that, the Wild remain fourth in goals against in the NHL. That's great. Third in the penalty kill. That does have to do with Dubnik and also good, solid defense in front of Dubnik on the penalty kill. Fourth in the, or tenth in the power play. That's actually a lot better than you'd think. But 24th in goals for, and I think that's just going to keep dropping if the Wild don't turn things around and consistently. Go ahead and have your five, six, seven goal game, but don't return with your two goals again for, for another week. It's ridiculous. And that's what's been damning this team forever and ever and ever and ever. And it drives you crazy. <laughs> the uh, James Shepard Memorial. 
I don't even know anymore. I'm just frustrated in general right now. Um, I need a writer. It just doesn't seem to, to be a factor at all. I don't want to just bash him all the time. Generally speaking, the lack of goals, the you know, Stahl has been invisible. Granlin hasn't been factoring all that much. He's really disappeared. He hasn't scored in a month. I mean, that's ridiculous. He's been stuck at 11 goals for a month. Remember when I called him the sniper? He ain't the sniper, folks. He was, but he ain't but he ain't the sniper anymore. It's been a month. It's been over a month. I mean, score, damn it. Come on. You, you got that nice shot. Put it in the net. Keep getting the assist. He's still leading the team in scoring overall. 37 points. That's freaking awesome. But let's see some goals again. And again, go ahead and keep steady. Keep all up, too. I ain't complaining about that. That's great. Go ahead and be like Blake Wheeler, I guess. But, uh, oh, the droughts everywhere. And Stahl's goal, it was just, you know, late and all that against Chicago and her trailing 4-1 to one with less than a minute left. And, and, you know, it's nice that he got it, but let's see some more. Let's see Let's see him lull the goalie to sleep like he did the last couple of years and flip that puck past the guy's shoulder. I, I miss seeing that from Stahl, and that's just completely vanished. So huge complaint there at the end of the day. Um, you could give it to multiple players. Again, just the lack of scoring, the lack of offense that continues to plague this roster is the James Shepard Memorial. I, you know, I could pick on Niederreiter all day. He's just been terrible the whole season, and I'm tired of it, uh, making him almost impossible to trade. Uh, that's for damn sure. So with that, let's take a break. We got to preview four games. We have to preview four games heading into the month of January, starting tonight with the Toronto Maple Leafs in Ontario. Toronto, Ontario. Then we get to play the worst team in the league, or one of the worst in Ottawa. Then, yep, the big long road trip here, at least four games anyway. Ottawa on the 5th of January. The 7th, Tuesday, Monday the 7th, in Montreal. And then a back-to-back. So we will see Alex Stalock in one of these two games in Boston, Massachusetts, Tuesday the 8th. We'll be back right after this. We are back here on Brave the Wild, four games to preview. Let's get rolling. And, of course, we'll talk about the prospects and wrap the show up, like always. We're going to play the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight, January the 3rd, Thursday, January the 3rd. Toronto Maple Leafs, second place in the Atlantic Division behind Tampa Bay. Ten whole points behind Tampa Bay, but still an outstanding team, Toronto. And this is in Toronto, unfortunately, so it's not going to be easy. 26-11-2, fourth in goals for, sixth in goals against, eighth in the power play, middle of the road, 16th in the power on the penalty kill. So, okay, you can beat them in the penalty kill, but they have the least amount of penalty minutes. So, well, oh goody. So, I guess it's not going to be an easy game. In fact, I'm not probably going to pick a win here. <laughs> Toronto has won four out of their last five. Six to one victory over Florida on the twentieth of December. Five to three victory over the Rangers on the twenty second. Back to back game against Detroit, who's not very good, obviously. Five to four win for Toronto. Four win four to two over Columbus on the road. Impressive. And then a four nothing loss against the surging New York Islanders on the twenty ninth, most recently. So Toronto shut out after scoring four or five goals. They basically averaged five goals a game because you have the five five and then the six and the four. So five goals a game in that four game win streak, which is scary stuff. Um, Mitchell Warner has been absolutely fantastic. He's actually leading the club in scoring. Austin Matthews has missed significant time, but he's over well over a point a game. Same with Mitchell Warner. John Tavares has been wonderful. Obviously, huge addition. 26 goals on the season, 44 total points. Morgan Riley with 31 assists to go with his 13 goals, 40 assists. Or Mitchell Warner, he was a factor big time against the Wild last time around. It's going to be a very interesting situation in Toronto. William Nylander finally back, finally playing, and he's only got two assists in 11 games, so obviously that uh, extended uh, time off did not help. Uh, Tyler Ennis had a goofy, lucky bounce against the Wild last time around. He's been playing, he's played on the top line on occasion, only 11 points, but seven goals for Tyler Ennis in the 33 games, so Funny, he's been getting goals here and there. Patrick Marlowe with 20 goals, or 20 points, 10 goals, 10 assists so far for the Wiley veteran, former San Jose Shark player, of course. Uh, I don't know. I don't like our chances. Austin Matthews, it's interesting 
with his status. Of course, he's missed extended time, unfortunately, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Frederick Anderson is one of the better goalies. He's he's had good moments. He's had not so good moments. Uh, Garrett Sparks has been good as well on occasion, but generally speaking, it's Toronto's goal scoring that factors more than anything, as they're one of the top goal scoring teams in the league. They're also good against goals against again, only sixth in goals against. This team is a Stanley Cup contender, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the scoring just goes on and on and on and on. I mean, Patrick Marlowe, the Wiley veteran, is basically like a third line center for the. Uh, a <laughs> third-line player for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs at this stage. He's got 20 points way down there. He is eighth on the team in scoring. So it's like, that's how deep this club is. Morgan Riley, again, also. I mean, one player after another. Nazim Kadri is a factor. Jake Gardiner. I mean, I don't know. I don't like the Wilds' chances against this club. Three lines deep, at least. I mean, maybe four lines deep. I mean, they're they're that good. I'd say at least three lines at the end of the day. But, yeah, at least three lines deep and all that. Uh, player after player, <coughs> pardon me, I shouldn't even be coughing like that, but uh, awesome team, solid, you know, solid defense, but generally it's their scoring that matters, they they set each other up, disappointing loss last time around, I don't like the Wilds' chances after, after you know, it's like you wish, you wish they didn't lose 4 nothing like that, so I don't know, I got a bad feeling about this one, I don't think Dubnik's going to have a very fun night, you might see a stay lock in that at some point, in fact, who knows? Maybe you'll see Stalock right away, but nah, I, I doubt it. Dubnik will be in net, but I think the Wild lose 4-1, to 4-2 to two in this game, something like that, maybe even 5-2 to two empty netter. I don't think it's going to be a pretty game. Um, if the Wild come out and beat Toronto on the road, it'd be an extremely impressive feat. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I think Toronto's not going to let the Wild get by in this one. Most likely guy to score for Minnesota. Uh, Mikhail Granlin, you're going to end your drought tonight. 12 gold a year for Mikhail Granlin against the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I'm moving right along here with the four games here. Uh, Ottawa Senators. Minnesota Wild will be playing the Ottawa Senators coming up. And, see, I thought I did miss somebody. Uh, oh, it is just, no, Boston, that was the other team. I was almost blanking on the fourth team. Boston was the fourth team they were going to play. So, yes, very busy week. Ottawa Senators, one of the worst teams in the league. Last place in the Eastern Conference, of course. Last place in the Atlantic Division. They're somehow ninth in the league in goals for, but they're 31st in goals against. So, expect the Minnesota Wild to score some goals in this game. And if they don't, shame on us. Uh, the defense in front of uh, Craig Anderson, not good. And Craig Anderson's well past his prime. You've seen a host of goalies out there. Mike Condon seeing some action. He's not been good in the little occasion. He's been a backup goalie off and on in the league. Mike McKenna, not been good. About four goals a game. He's 1-4 in four in uh, six games started. Marcus Hodgeberg. Marcus Hod- Hodgeberg. Wow. <laughs> About three and a half goals. Craig Anderson, three and a half goals. He's squeezed in a shutout. Hopefully the Minnesota Wild aren't the next one for them. Uh, Ottawa's lost five in a row, and they've been getting hammered. Just hammered. 4 nothing to Washington on the 22nd. A six days off during the Christmas break. Yeah, let's stop with the holiday break. Just call it Christmas break because what day is in the middle of 22 and 28? Just come on. <laughs> New York Islanders, they beat the uh, they beat the uh, Ottawa Senators 6-3. to three. Sorry for the table rumming here. Uh, Washington beats the uh, Ottawa Senators again 3-2. to two, Both at home, by the way. Uh, in in Ottawa, Columbus in Columbus, six to three on New Year's Eve, crunching the uh, Ottawa Senators, and the Vancouver Canucks squeeze by Ottawa, four to three in Ottawa. The Ottawa Senators host the Minnesota Wild, hopefully for at least their sixth loss in a row here. Well, let's make it seven actually. <laughs> It'll be seventh loss in a row. Minnesota needs to uh, get the job done in this game, score some goals, please. Uh, Ottawa does have some offense, but the the chemistry on Ottawa and all that. It's just not been good. This is a weird team, a very weird team. I mean, the Wild just screwed around with this club earlier this year. Uh, should have put them away, and they didn't. Right? You know, it's just the Wild eventually got the victory. Um, Mark Stone is leading the club in scoring with 19 goals, 26 assists. Pretty impressive numbers, over a point a game. Matt Duchesne, of course, the former Colorado Avalanche, traded to Ottawa last season. And an intriguing move there. Uh, 40 points for Duchesne with Ottawa. Thomas Chabot with with a point a game, 38 points in 38 games. Very impressive. Ryan Zingle with uh, 29 points also. So they have scores all up all up and down. Michael Butterker, obviously defenseman, solid player. 24 points for him. Chris Tierney, the former Shark. Bobby Ryan has been a factor for years. Brady Tachuk, not quite as good as his brother, but still doing a good job for Ottawa with the 20 points there. He's missed 
11 games this season, unfortunately for him, but factor when he's played. 10 goals, 10 assists, 20 points in the 30 games. I don't know why I just keep reading off numbers. I apologize. But it's like, you you know, you're intrigued by what you're going up against. Lots of scorers on this club, but obviously the chemistry is not good. The defense isn't good. The goaltending has been terrible. Uh, Minnesota needs to capitalize, get the job done. Four to three, five to three, something like that. I think Minnesota scores five goals in the game. I think you have one of those crazy games where it's five to three. It's going to be an ugly, weird game, but Minnesota will win it five to three. Most likely, got to score. Eric Stahl will get his 14th goal of the season against a former Eastern Conference foe. I always bring that up, don't I? But no, I, I think he's going to score against the Ottawa Senators. Most likely guy to score. I, in the past, I would have said Dumba because he was the hero against Ottawa on multiple occasions, but of course, can't say that. 5-3 to three win for Minnesota. I think Minnesota does have their little solid, fun game. You have some fun. It's going to be high scoring, but I think it's going to be sloppy. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get mad. Ottawa's going to score goals. You think they shouldn't, but Minnesota escapes and gets the job done at the end of the day. This, of course, on Saturday the 5th of December. Then Minnesota will head to Montreal. Another game where, well, it's a team that's been good this year, and then they suck. And I, I don't know, Carey Price is not even close to what he used to be. Just a few years ago, he was looked on as maybe the best goalie in the league. Like, the best goalie in the league. And he's not been the best goalie in the league for quite a while. Obviously, chemistry in front of him is a problem. Antti Niemi is not good at all. And remember, he was a member of the Chicago Blackhawks when they won the Stanley Cup. But the Blackhawks were such a scoring team at the time. And Niemi was having probably his best year as well. Very solid. Lots of names on Toronto, or Montreal, pardon me. Again, this is on Monday the 7th of uh, January. Ante Niemi, I don't think they're going to put Niemi in. Uh, the Wild have had major success against Carey Price in the past. We've had six goal games against him. The Wild are going to score goals in these games. I you got to take advantage. At, at least get a split out of these four. I don't think we beat Toronto, and beating Boston on the road in a back-to-back is not easy. But uh, this should be, I'm guessing this is the Dubnik game, and then you're going to go with Staluck against the Boston uh, Bruins. That's my guess. I think Dubnik will be in the net. It's going to be, again, something like 5-3 or three again. It's going to be a high-scoring, kind of an icky game. Maybe Minnesota only allows two goals. Dubnik is sharp and solid. Jonathan Druin has 12 goals. It's just a mess of players. Some of these guys, are, you know, they had troubles in the past with their previous teams. Montreal has won four out of their last five, though. I mean, to be to be fair here. They beat Arizona on the road, 2-1. to one. They beat Las Vegas two days later on the road, 4-3. to three. Extremely impressive. And going into Florida after the Christmas break, 5-3 to three victory. So maybe I shouldn't get too cocky here. Five-game road trip, and they go 4-1. and one. They lose to Tampa 6-5. to five. Pretty epic battle back-to-back after beating Florida the day before. So the old Florida two-step out there. They beat the Dallas Stars in Dallas on New Year's Eve. So I shouldn't get too cocky. Montreal's playing great. So I should watch it. Uh, they have to play the Vancouver Canucks and the Nashville Predators at home before hosting the Minnesota Wild and going back on the road again in a back-to-back situation. Hmm. Maybe we will see Antti Nami. Nah, I think we get Carey Price, and I think the Detroit Red Wings get uh, Antti Nami. I think that would make sense. I think Minnesota does have Dubnik in the game against Montreal, and we take our chances with Stalock against Boston. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Why not have a fresh stay lock go against the Boston Bruins? A tired but good Dubnik against the Montreal Canadiens. So, uh, Mike Riley, Mike Riley watch. He's only at six points in 34 games. So, he's right back the way he was with Minnesota. He's been getting a lot of minutes with Montreal, at least on occasion. But generally speaking, just the same old guy. You know, it's kind of sad. He was so good with the Gophers. And he was actually kind of good in Iowa when he got a chance to play down there. But uh, generally speaking, he has not been a solid player for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Shea Weber has missed more time than craziness. Uh, Shea Weber misses so much time, it's like unbelievable. And uh, it's just been that kind of year for him. It's been that kind of stint and looks like a horrible trade. As great as Shea Weber was for Nashville, well, P.K. Supon has been that much better. And the injuries to uh, Shea Weber have not been good. And, of course, the chemistry with Montreal has been a mess, but they're playing pretty awesome right now, and that's why they'd be in the playoffs if the season ended today, and maybe even a factor. Their scoring is like all over the place. They have guys that can score, they have guys, it's just hot, cold, hot, cold, Max Dummy, 37 points. Nobody really has a ton of goals. Uh, Brendan Gallagher is leading the team with only 15 goals, but it's, they're pretty deep. They're about two, three lines deep. They have good, solid defensemen, but none of them are that good, obviously. The defense is 
not as good as the uh, the forwards per se for this team, and it's generally an offensive club in the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Philip Dunalt's been a valuable player, 20 assists along the way, along with Jeff Petrie, 21 assists with the eight goals there. Thomas Tatar, Jonathan Druin, Max Domi's officially leading the club with 37 total points, and he's a plus five. Philip Dunalt is the best overall player, I would say, with a, le- a plus 11. Been a very valuable piece for Montreal this season, and one of the reasons why the club is playing better of late. But I think Minnesota, uh, boy, well, maybe it's going to be a one in three week. I, I don't know. Minnesota's got to win against one of these two teams. Boston is a factor, too. They're third in the Atlantic Division as we head on forward. I'm kind of debating between these clubs right now. Boston's a lower-scoring cl- uh, club. And that's kind of what I figured with, uh, I think, Staylock and Ed. I think he's going to have a very solid game. Boston definitely has some scores, but generally speaking, it's uh, they're top-heavy more than anything else. It drops off very quickly. Where Montreal's depth is a factor. I like Minnesota's chances against Montreal better than against Boston. I don't know. I don't think Minnesota's going to win in Boston. I'll say the Wild beat Montreal. I think it's going to be a nice, high-scoring, 5-3 to three type game. Most likely guy to score against Montreal will be Zach Parisi, the French-Canadian Zach Parisi. Of course, he's not French-Canadian, but his father is. See, you get the idea. French-Canadian heritage Zach Parisi will defeat the uh, Montreal Canadiens. So you head into Boston. Maybe Charlie Coyle's for a future team, but probably not. Uh, the former New York Islander, Juroslav Halak, who was terrible, Juroslav Halak, not Juroslav, who was terrible for them for a while, reemerges with Boston, and he's way better. And I never saw this coming. 2.28 goals against average, three shutouts on the year. It's, they're forming a little platoon there with Tuka Rask, of course, who's been the longtime Boston goalie, replacing Tim Thomas years ago after the Stanley Cup Championship in 2011. Tuka Rask basically took over after that. They're like, thanks for the Stanley Cup, Tim Thomas. See ya. It was kind of mean. <laughs> but, of course, you had the lockout, too. So, whatever. The lockout kind of screwed up that. Uh, Tori Krug, one of those better play- defensemen out there. 24 points, 20 of assists along the way. Patrice Bergeron, who's been, of course, one of the best players for a long time. He's missed 16 games this season. Brad Marchand is crazy and licks people's faces and stuff, which is... I don't know. That's a weird guy. He's a great player, but a weird guy. Uh, David Pasternak, who's led the club in scoring with 50 points, way above average, obviously. 24 goals on the season. Clearly the top player for the Boston Bruins. Their goaltending has been awesome, though. Tuka Rask has been solid. No shutouts on the year. So either goalie you go up against, you're going against a good goalie. Uh, Yuroslav Alak has been the better goalie, though. 2.28 to Tuka Rask's 2.63 Boston it's like you're stunned. Like, they're third in the league in goals against. So, I'm looking at like a 2-1, to 3-2 to two type of game. I'm thinking more 3-2. to two. I've got a feeling maybe 3-1, to one, but I think Boston wins the game, unfortunately. Shall I pick Charlie Coyle to score against his hometown? Shall I pick it? Ah, it's kind of like the lamest thing ever, isn't it? How about Spurgeon ends his drought? He's been in a serious drought. Uh, he's not been playing that great. And for the first time in probably forever... I'm kind of willing to trade uh, Jared Spurgeon right about now. I think as long as you can get a good enough piece for him, if we're heading in that direction, if we're heading in a direction of like, let's start kind of rebuilding on the fly here, at least add some pieces, some younger prospects that can hopefully take this team in a better direction. And it just kind of is what it is. I mean, look at the Blackhawks. Do Parisian Suter have a gripe? Do you hear Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane going ape crap behind the scenes? If they are, it's a pretty good secret in Chicago, so they're, they're keeping it under wraps pretty well. Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves are not going ape bleep behind the scenes because the Blackhawks are, you know, where they are. They they understand the situation, and heck, they're the ones getting all the money, so what do you expect? Zach Parisi, and uh, what's his name, old uh, Ryan Suter, that guy that likes to dictate things behind the scenes a lot. It's no longer a secret. It was for a while, but it ain't a secret anymore. I mean you got to be willing to make some... you, you got to be willing to let some people go, make some moves here and there. It is what it is. Uh, Calgary and Boston. Yeah, no, that's the next game, of course, coming up. Boston Bruins, obviously one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. Not great, but good. They're a factor. They'll be in the playoffs, but they won't win it. They just won't. Uh, they've won three out of their last five. They beat Nashville 5-2 to two at home on the 22nd. Back-to-back, losing to at Carolina... On the 23rd, 5-3. to three, Beat New Jersey 5-2. to two. The Devils have been a huge disappointment this year. Big win for Boston over Buffalo in Buffalo. And in Chicago. Uh, 29th of December in Buffalo. 
three to two, and then at Chicago on New Year's Day, four to two victory. So that's solid. Of course, rematch of the 2013 Stanley Cup final. I was not happy with the outcome there at all. But well, I was. Yeah, unfortunately, Boston just wasn't up for that one, and uh, that just was it was what it was. They'll be playing the Flames today, Buffalo again in a few days, and then finally on Wednesday, January, Tuesday, January the 8th, pardon me, um, Alex Dalek will be a net. I think the Blackhawks, no, I'm just kidding. I think the Boston Bruins get the victory, 3-2, to 3-1, to one, most likely guy to score in the game. Let's go with Jared Spurgeon, hopefully upping his possible trade value if that's how it goes. Nice overall team, but they're not going to win anything. But I think they're better than us, and they play us better. A good goaltending, good solid team. This is just a better version of what Montreal wishes they were, I suppose. Um, they're fairly deep. They have some young players. They have some good players. They have some old players, unfortunately. Um, Bergeron's been around forever. Um, David Back is his ancient history, and he's been out forever. Stephen Kampfer, remember him? He ended up going back to Boston after all these years. That's funny. The uh, wild defenseman acquired for Greg Zanin many years ago uh, from Boston. Zena, <laughs> Zeno Shara has been around forever. He's in his 40s. He's only got four points. Three of them goals, believe it or not, for the gigantic uh, defenseman out there. Um, and uh, it's been a good run. i got to think he's going to retire. He's missed about, shoot, he's missed about 20 games this year. So, I don't know, healthy scratch, injuries, this and that. David Backus, boy, they paid a lot of money to that guy, and they're not getting the, certainly not getting the return, that's for sure. So there's a lot of that going on in Boston, but they have other players to make up for it, luckily for them. But that's why they won't be winning any Stanley Cups. Uh, Charlie McAvoy has been a nice player. He was a rookie last year. He's missed a ton of time, though. But a factor, 10 assists in the 17 uh, games he's played in the defense and the young, uh, high-scoring defenseman. Interesting team, but Boston wins the game. Bottom line, Minnesota goes 2-2 two and two during the uh, stretch. Let's talk about the prospects. And yes, we always start with the Iowa Wild because they're the closest thing and everything and all that. Um, it's been a uh, heck of a week for uh, Euler and X since getting sent down to Iowa in the four games. Well, three games he's played. He scored two goals in his first game. Two goals, just like that. Thought he might get a hat trick, but well, he winds up scoring two goals in the next two games as well. One goal in each game. So, no assists so far for Yule Erickson. He's actually been playing wing in some of these games. So, interesting status there. Trying to get his scoring touch again. So, great start for Yule Erickson. Four goals in the three games that he has been in Iowa. You've still not seen the return of Sam Anas. No added points for Belpedio. Been quiet for most of these guys. Sokolov added a point. Justin Kluse continues to jump around and add points. Uh, Mason Shaw's drought kind of continues, unfortunately for him. Brendan Mantle added a couple of assists. He's now at 18. No goals so far, but 18 assists for the top-scoring defenseman for the Iowa Wild. Again, Woodbury native, 21 years of age. Love his story. He has been really something, setting up other players on the power play along the way, adding some assists, a couple of them this past week. Cal O'Reilly continues to lead the club in scoring. He's just setting up other players, and he's a nice veteran that way. Justin Kloos leads the club with, uh, well, no, he's not. He's second on the team in scoring with uh, 10 goals, 14 assists, 24 points, but he has been spectacular since about a month ago. He's really picked up the pace. He's been the best player on the team the last month or so, I would have to say. Andrew Hammond finally back in net again after missing so much time, helped Iowa win, only allowing one goal last night again when the uh when Euler Xenet got his fourth goal with Iowa already. So geez, nice to see Andrew Hammond finally back in there in a good solid showing. Cabo Kokonen added another shutout the past week, his fourth along the way, of course, giving up a ton of goals in in that uh uh Stockton Heat game though, unfortunately, but the game after that got the shutout. Cabo Kokonen two point two two point four two goals against average four shutouts on the year. Andrew Hammond and him both at four, uh, nine goals, four losses on the season. Great season for both of them. 2.77 for Andrew Hammond. And the first place, Iowa Wild, playing better again after losing a good number of games. It's just amazing the scoring touch some of these guys have at the AHL level. Like I was saying, again, I mean, Ulerich Sinek was a point a game when he was down there. And he's more than a point a game now. And he comes up to Minnesota. He had four points all bleeping season. So it just leaves you at a loss, like, really, man? You wish he could find some touch in the NHL. Something. I mean, even an inkling. And it's just like, seriously, four points in 27 games, only one goal for Eul Eriksson. And, of course, multiple scratches along the way because he just wasn't 
wasn't going anywhere. He wasn't playing well, and he missed some time with some injury as well, unfortunately. Um, nice to see Nick Steeler going to get back in the mix coming up again. Luke Cunning finally got an assist, and of course he was denied a goal against the Pittsburgh Penguins. I didn't even bring that up. It was a high-sticking call. I don't think he high-sticked. It, it was just maybe the motion from how high he was, and he kind of slapped it down. That must be, I guess, the referee's reasoning for calling it, because the puck wasn't that high. I mean, it wasn't that high. It was below the crossbar, and that's what uh, Bruce Boudreaux's argument was, and I think he's right. I still consider Luke Cunning a prospect, of course, because he could very well wind up in Iowa again, but... Um, well, you did the right thing here. Keep cutting up. Send Erickson Eck down. Erickson Eck needs to get something going. And, of course, Jordan uh, Jordan Greenway has been a factor. Not a major factor in the scoring, but he's been a general speaking factor for the Minnesota Wild off and on during the course of the season. Uh, scoring chances and then scoring. Still at 11 points on the season for Greenway. Six of them goals. It's been a very, very, very frustrating season for the Minnesota Wild. Uh, and in, in Iowa, at least they're playing much better there. You got the Wiley veterans, but you need some prospects as well. The veterans have definitely helped this team play better, and I think they're a boost to the young players. When you have decent, solid veterans that are actually good at the AHL level, you can help players like Brennan Mendel's numbers go up, rather than Brennan Mendel stuck at four assists all season because nobody scores. That's a problem. And now, I mean, Brennan Mendel obviously becoming more and more of a factor. He is a plus 15 on the club. What an awesome story. And Matt Bartkowski sent back down to Iowa. And now Ryan Murphy's been called up. I would, God, I'd rather see like Brennan Mendel or uh, Louis Belpedio, but it sounds like they just want to let Louis Belpedio continue to develop. Again, I mean, I don't expect him to come up and set the world on fire in Louis Belpedio's case, but man, I'd sure love to see him. He is only at 10 points in the season, but the good news for Belpedio is he stayed healthy. As I remember, a couple of years ago, he missed an extended amount of time, and that was frustrating when he was with the uh, Miami Red Hawks. That was unfortunate, but it is what it is. And Sam Anas continues, Sam Honest, pardon me, continues to recover from the broken hand, and much to my major chagrin. Uh, generally a quiet week for the collegiate players. Nice to see him back in action again, but unfortunately, nothing spectacular for most of them. Uh, Sam Henches has ha- still had eight points in the 14 games for St. Cloud State. Jack McBain for Boston College, just like Alex Tuck. He's only got four points in 12 games. Extremely quiet. Two goals, two assists for him. Uh, Lanya is pretty much a little bit of a point a game for the club he is on in the OHL. Providence's uh, <laughs> Brandon Dohame continues to pop in the points. Six goals, ten assists in the 18 games he's played. He's been very good. Almost a point a game for Providence. Nice junior year for Brandon, Brandon Dohame. He's a forward who shoots left. So basically he's a left winger out of Parkland, Florida again, like I always mention. <laughs> yeah, I mean... um. The two lower-scoring senior defensemen, <laughs> Nick Boca for Michigan, big physical guy, kind of a Nick Steeler type. He's a right shot, so he could be a right shot for Steeler. Maybe he could replace Pattern at some point. Nick Boca might be between him and Sadek for that job at some point, that bottom pair defenseman someday. But Boca will more than likely be in Ottawa, or Ottawa, Iowa at the end of the year. <laughs> I'm going crazy. Oh, that sounded funny. Five, five points for him. Jack Sadek had a good weekend a few weeks ago. Before the break, quiet weekend. This one, unfortunately, stuck at eight points, just like last time. Of course, no points, set, uh, but still, that's that's okay. I mean, he, at least he's at eight. He's getting a few more assists than uh, Nick Boca. The accuracy on Jack Stadix passes, though, when he's moving the puck forward. You know, they always talk about like Philip Johansson's got that. He's really good at moving the puck. You know, it's moving the puck forward. This and that. Jack Sadik is really good at moving the puck, and his passes are bleeping accurate. I mean, it's tape to tape with the guy. I, I love the accuracy on Jack Sadik's passes. He can definitely lead along the way. He could be a he, he could be good that in that sense to start some type of a run. Hopefully, at least get the puck where it needs to be. Get the puck into the other team's zone, and at least out of our own zone. This and that, and move it forward. Hopefully, leading to something, some something, anything, whatever it is, opportunity, get into the other team's zone, get something started. So, if anything, he's a starter in that sense. May or may not get an assist on them, but he'll get them on occasion because of that. Of course, it would always be the second assist, but who cares? An assist is an assist. And I love what Jack Sadick brings to the mix at the end of the day with the Golden Gophers and hopefully the Iowa and Minnesota Wild in the not too distant future. So, with that said, I'm going to close things here. I want to thank Vince Germano 
at Brave the Wild, at Brave the Wild. I want to thank Vince Germano out of Australia for retweeting the most recent show, episode 195, The Drought Continues. Of course, this episode 196, I'm going to call it Outside Looking In because that's what we are, unfortunately. It's just not getting better at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, it just kind of is what it is there. The Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash brave the wild, facebook.com forward slash brave the wild. encourage you to join that page. Please follow the Twitter account if you could. Interact with me greatly appreciated. Uh, giving a shout out to Minnesota Wild Hardcore, Jim Maddell, Sarah Maddell, Chad Walski, uh, Pavel Burnett, and uh, Merrick Skyba from the Czech Republic. They like to follow the Wild all over the place. Great post. Again, he's one of the admins as well. Pavel Burnett, great guy. Czech Republic follows all the prospects just like I do. In fact, you could say he does an even better job. I love that guy. Keeps up with everything Minnesota Wild related just like I try to do on this show as best possible. Chance Caustic, David Caustic. Chance uh, introduced me to Mr. Pavel Benet, uh, awesome guy. Again, uh, Chance Caustic is my brother-in-law. He, uh, my brother married Chance's wife. Or Chance, <laughs> what am I talking about? Chance's sister. <laughs> married Chance's wife. <laughs> married Chance's sister. I am a little bit out of it today with my, uh, yeah, still recovering from this cold. It's still not done yet. <laughs> She's married Chance's sister. Jeez. So with that said, it's been a uh, overall crazy, <sighs> been an overall crazy run for Minnesota. Not so good, disappointing, this and that. But no, please do join that page. Lots of in-game threads, nice people to talk to. Get frustrated, be happy, enjoy it. We're all a family, Minnesota Wild family on all these pages. Thank you again. Please join Minnesota Wild Hardcore and, of course, join my Facebook page if you could. The, uh, again, facebook.com forward slash brave the wild all this information will be in the show description along with the phone lines 209-736-7877 209-736-7877 it is a voicemail do treat it as such imagine you're calling in for brave the wild do your statement shout out comment question and opine there's the call now button on the facebook page which goes to the same number treated the same way same exact thing it just uses facebook messenger to get there so it's nice and easy no matter where you're from as long as there's some kind of internet or cellular connection you're good to go um, wireless internet connection, whatever it is. And then there's the audio submission route, which I highly, highly recommend. And it would be awesome to have you on here. Use the free voice recording application on any smartphone or smart device on the planet. Treat it like a phone call and just basically press record. Go from there. Save it. Send it to Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Again, that will be in the show description for copy and paste purposes ready to rock and roll or whatever you want to do. Then it will convert it into an MP3 file. Thanks to Zumzar.com. Really love that webpage and what they bring. And that service is very useful to this show. Then you can hear your voice with mine in a possible third segment, or we'll just kind of have an extended uh, second segment. I, uh, a lot of my other shows, I have three segments. This one, I keep it to two. Um, there isn't a whole lot of fan interaction on this show, unfortunately, so I just kind of squeeze it in the second segment. But if it ever gets big enough, we'll have a third segment. Like Purple Mafia, there, it needs a whole segment all on its own. Again, Minnesota Vikings podcast, Purple Mafia, Timberwolves Explosion, Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Do check those out if you could. Please give a positive rating for Brave the Wild on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Podcast if you could. It's greatly appreciated. want to thank the guy who sent one last week. That was just awesome. Just an awesome review saying uh, basically how I cover everything and tell it like it is, and I try my best. Please uh, forgive me if I was a bit <laughs> wishy-washy, kind of kind of got the cobwebs going on today. I apologize if I'm a little bit kind of moving around funny today. Uh, so please forgive me for that. I should be healthier coming around. I did the best I could, and I enjoyed the conversation and still brought the... Uh, Brought the opinions, brought the, the facts, this and that, best I could to this show. And I'm going to continue to do that next week. Hopefully healthier and better than ever. Take care, everybody, and enjoy the new year. And we'll talk to you again, hopefully a successful week. 